welcome back and welcome to those who are attending for the first time. This hearing is resumed. Uh, this is a continuation of our hearing, I think, in um, September. Uh, welcome, everyone. This is actually the second hearing of the committee, and in the agenda today is the continuation of the review on the Philippine progress on the UN 2030 Agenda on Sustainable Development. And um, hopefully we'll uh, be able to spend um, sufficient time to get started, to get a good discussion started on SDG 12, which is a personal interest of mine. Um, during the presentation of NEDA in the last hearing, they relate to the committee that the government is in the middle of preparing an action plan on SDG 12, which is the most interconnected SDG. We hope that uh, today's uh, discussion is going to be productive and that uh, we can share our outcome soon with our colleagues. A few reminders, uh, we practice sustainability here. If you have any suggestions to add to what we're currently doing, which is a very simple change in lifestyle habit, uh, no pet bottles, uh, kindly, Actually, what I want to do is um, start sharing that with uh, sending out a letter like we did before on, was it breastfeeding? We did a few things with the civil service, no, to get, uh, maybe we can co-sign uh, uh, that letter since NET is overseeing uh, SDGs uh, on some pra sustainable practices and maybe we can also check on what are the best practices around out there. Um, okay. So as I usually say, um, kindly refrain from reading line by line your position papers. Um, it will be more productive if I read it myself. If you have a position paper, then what I prefer is that you outline the key points to, uh, to me and even point out what are the very important elements of your discussion so I can focus on it uh, at another time. Um, so we're ready to proceed. Um, first, uh, we will call on uh, PS. There we go. Na beatin tayo last time, di ba? Parang I just asked you a question, didn't really get to give you a time time to present. So we'll give you that. Uh, I'll just ask my staff to be the timekeepers. I think uh, they've given you. I, I hope that you always give them a heads up before they come on what their time is. Kasi sayang naman mag present ng 20 minute presentation tapos sa sabihin niyo 5 to 10 minutes lang, no? Um, but rest assured, if you feel that the time given is not enough, just let us know because we can have a smaller group meeting because I do want to ensure that the information, the wealth of information you have is transmitted to me. It just might not be enough time within these two hours that we allocate, okay? So feel free to point that out naman. So we'll start with PSA and then we'll go to NEDA. So Ms. Wilma Gillian, um, Assistant National Statistician, please proceed. You have the floor. Thank you, Senator, and good afternoon, everyone. So first, I would just like to give you uh, an understanding of the uh, global uh, governance of uh, the Sustainable Development Goals. So we all know that the forerunner of the Sustainable Development Goals is the Millennium Development Goals. And uh, even before uh, it ended in 2015, there were already uh, efforts to come up with a successi successive uh, or succession uh, development agenda, which was actually decided at the Earth Summit in 2012, Rio plus 20. Uh, the process to develop a set of SDGs was launched, which were to build upon the MDGs and converge with the post-2015 development agenda. And uh, in January 2013, uh, uh, July 2013 and March 2015, there were this creation of the three working groups. The first one is the, they call it the OWG or the Open uh, Working Group, uh, and then the, in July 2013, the High Level Political Forum on Sustainable Development Goals, and it's, act, and it's actually the XLG where the countries report the voluntary national uh, uh, review, uh, which we did for the second time uh, in July. It's the High Level Political yes, uh, Forum. Yeah. And how, how often is the review? Two years? It's annual, but uh, annual. there's a set of countries that are scheduled to Correct. make the Kaya report. Na. So effectively, yung, yung country mo, every how many years? Uh, it's voluntary. Ah. Yeah. It's voluntary, but we... Uh, so, well, but offhand, let's say you're volunteering anyway, you can be accommodated every year? Hindi naman. Um, 
punahan. <laughs> so, so what's our goal? But in our case, it's every three years. Every, 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 three. every three years. And when was the last? Last year back? Just this year. Just this year. Ah, just this year. So, so the first one was in 2016. Yeah. And then okay. the second in this one, 2019. 2019. Okay. Okay. Yeah. okay. And the other group is the interagency uh, group on uh, sustainable, interagency expert group on sustainable development goals, which actually uh, developed the indicator framework to monitor the sustainable 17 sustainable development goals. So the indicator framework provides metrics uh, in terms of our achievements for each of the 17 development uh, goals. So uh, these are just uh, the uh, the works of the three working groups. So I will skip uh, that uh, slide uh, already. When, 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 just out of ano lang, for my understanding, when we submit, um, they also give feedback. Not really. Ah, not really. Eh. Okay. So, so what benefit is it to us? Wala lang. It's just to help set a standard. So you feel some kind of pressure to be submitting. So, and there's really no need for, ano, for input. Kasi, minsan maganda din yun, di ba? Yeah, please. Yeah. So, the VNR process kasi is also consultative. So, we actually, uh, may, ano, merong, merong standards na sineset ang UN for coming up with that voluntary national report. Right, so, right. kailangan consultative, participatory, we do consultations all across, dapat lahat ng sectors involved. We do so consultations, us, what do you mean? With them? Or with, no, 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 dito sa, ano, dito sa atin, civil society. Correct. Uh, ah, yeah, because of the standards that they set, it, it would require that you do that. Yes, okay. Yes, now, yes. the only reason why I ask is because in other forums uh, that I'm famili more familiar with, that I've attended, um, the, the questions that they ask are, and then later on, there's also a reporting, like, I'm specifically thinking of the uh, was it uh, anti-discrimination uh, women no not policy the international ano, sedaw. Sedaw. they actually come out with a report to really critique you so you know you can come out with the best uh, report that you think you are capable of tapos may critique ka pa rin mababasa doon diba? eh, regardless I just wanted to know how it works um, because my, my ultimate objective is how do we learn from other countries similarly situated. Like, I would have a hard time, of course, comparing us with Scandinavian countries kasi anlayo talaga, di ba? Anlayo talaga. I mean, it's like a, it's like being in Disneyland <laughs> when I'm there. Uh, but, you know, how do we learn? How do we learn from others? Maybe you can tackle that when, when it's your end. I'm just throwing out the question. Sige, go ahead. Consultations. Yes, yeah, sorry. Uh, multi-stakeholder consultations and bilateral meet, uh, meetings, um, we were able to come up with the Philippine uh, Sustainable Development Goal Indicators, which uh, consists of 155 indicators uh, to monitor 97 out of the 169 global targets, but for all the 17 goals. Uh, in terms of the distribution of the 155 SDG indicators by source of primary data, uh, many or 66% of this uh, 155 Philippine SDG indicators are actually coming from administrative data from different national government agencies. Uh, survey data, which usually comes from the Philippine Statistics Authority, 23% of the 155, but there are also indicators, 5% of them are coming from a combination of admin and survey data and a combination of admin and census data for 6%. Now, in terms of the available disaggregation uh, by uh, um, lo yeah, regional, provincial, and by sex, 66% uh, of the 155 indicators have regional distribution or disaggregation whereas only 42% have provincial disaggregation, but we have 84% by sex disaggregation. So 84% of the 155 Philippine SDG indicators have sex disaggregation, male and female disaggregation. Question on um, the data gathering, if you can leave it on that page for a few minutes, for a minute. Um, a lot of times when I look at the data, uh, I have to make my own distinction or remind myself that 
there's a big difference between the population that is situated in the urban center versus the rural center plus the income disparity so how can you can we keep that in mind i, I leave that up to you but i don't want you know after five years ten years and don't parin tayo na it's not um it's not uh i find the data not as useful as it can be because if it will present to us an average uh then then that average to me is so unreliable because it's coming especially when it's it's um income based because it's dispersed like even if you say we're talking about a particular province no whether it's visayas or mindanao but all of these regions have um urban centers and and all throughout in that province there's a small percent of very wealthy members of the community so yun lang talaga yung concern ko so anytime i see average i shy away from that data so later on as, as it, I'll, I'll give an example as we move along now so the more the more um disaggregated it is for me of course the better because then we you know when you see it broken down into ec economic class uh, uh sexes then it's better because it uh, gives you a clearer picture but when i see the fig when i see something that says average i feel like it's so unreliable because masyadong malaki yung gap nung nung polar ends uh we also have a lot of statistics with urban and rural disaggregation uh poverty uh, incidents for the basic sector farmers fisher folk uh, senior citizens youth uh, and then later on uh, in the 2018 uh, report we shall be able to come up with uh, uh, poverty incidents by persons with disabilities uh, for the first time yeah so we are taking a lot of effort naman ma'am to come up with more uh, disaggregated just data. park it but one of the one of the examples that comes to mind is yung sa teenage pregnancies no although nabanggit sa akin ng staff ko na we do have disaggregated data on the economic uh, group that would be most affected pero i wanted to dig further and ask and this one wala pang nakasagot sa akin so i don't baka hindi lang namin alam baka ma-check niyo sa data niyo uh, would be when you uh, state a figure of teenage pregnancies and uh, we know that uh, we have data that shows that many uh, the reason given for dropping out of school is family matters and it was explained that family matters is includes pregnancy so number one pwede ba natin ma-determine yan for sure kung includes yung I, I mean bakit ba ganun ka, ka general yon out of ano ba yon delikadesa na hindi natin alam kung ano ba talaga yung family matters kasi before pag sinabi mong family matters for me the girl has to work there's a big difference between the girl has to work to support her family versus the girl got pregnant so i don't want to assume na yun yon although um pagka kwento ni secretary briones yun talaga yung uh, term na ginagamit pag pregnant siya and then my other question there is um how about the girls that were already out of school kaya sila pregnant that's very different than they dropped out because they were pregnant or they were already not within the confines of the school and siling nabuntis so if you could just check that for me but those are the kind of examples and i think that's very important in our uh addressing teen pregnancies which goes into one of the sdg goals then diba kaya ganun ako ka particular after 10 years if we still don't have the correct data mamaya diyan ano tayo ng ano ng teen pregnancy sa schools yung pala wala na sila dun sa school na pregnant na nga sila dahil they're not even supported by the school so yun thank you well taken ma'am so uh, just for us uh, to have an idea of the sources of uh, data for the sustainable development goal indicators 33 uh, percent is coming from the psa and uh, deped and dnr uh, uh, have 8.4 percent for deped and 7.7 percent of the um, 155 uh, philippine sdgs and uh, you can see the numbers for all the other uh, data sources uh, in the in this map so in uh, 
2016, uh, the PSA Board, which is the highest policy-making body uh, on statistical uh, matters, uh, came up with uh, the PSA Board resolution to set up the institutional mechanism for SDG monitoring. Uh, the PSA Board has enjoyed all concerned government instrumentalities to provide the necessary data support to monitor the sustainable uh, development goals. So we have the different uh, agencies here, uh, the NEDA, the Philippine Statistical Research and Training Institute, data producers and other government agencies, mostly uh, administrative data are coming from uh, these uh, other uh, government agencies, and then but at the same time, they are also the data users, planners, and of course, our policy uh, and decision makers. And then we have uh, development partners like the ADB, the World Bank, the ILO, the Paris 21, who are, who are helping us in uh, the generation of uh, indicators uh, that we are not regularly producing or in the development of uh, uh, methodologies for the indicators that we are not ready to monitor. Uh, also, the academe, the media, the private sector, civil society organizations, practically everyone is consulted in is part of the uh, SDG uh, monitoring uh, in the country. Uh, we have also uh, set up a statistical coordination mechanism uh, by establishing the PSA SDG team. This is an inter-unit uh, uh, SDG team uh, from the PSA and also the Philippine SDG focal points uh, composed of uh, representatives from policy making body, bodies, uh, data producers, uh, data producers like the NR, the OH, uh, DepEd, practically all the uh, government agencies and we have also the research and training uh, institution uh, who provides uh, uh, statistical researches or studies for those indicators uh, with no methodologies uh, yet. Uh, we call them the tier three indicators. Now also to be able to guide us uh, in the monitoring of the sustainable development goals, um, we came up uh, with the process, uh, with three process flows. We call it the, we call them the Philippine SDG data flow and this has been approved in the August meeting of the PSA board. So there's a process flow for the national SDGI monitoring. Uh, all of these are data actually for indicators uh, that uh, we are already ready. We call them the tier one indicators. But uh, there are also indicators, we call them uh, tier three indicators, those that we know develop methodologies yet. We also have the process flow for methodological developments uh, on, the, on these indicators. And a process flow also for responding to SDG uh, related uh, questionnaires and surveys by uh, international uh, agencies who are uh, custodian to some of, some, uh, of the indicators. Um, we have actually done a lot already uh, in the Philippines in terms of uh, monitoring the SDGs. Uh, we are leading actually in the Asia Pacific. However, we still have a lot of issues and challenges. And among these are um, the uh, large number of uh, tier two and tier three indicators yet. When we say tier two indicators, these are the indicators that we already have uh, developed methodology, but there is no regular availability of data. And uh, tier three indicators, those with no methodology. Uh, if you would notice in the graph, tier two, yung no, there is a methodology, yes. but no regular uh, production of okay, the data. Okay, pero what, what is preventing you from producing the data? Uh, these have not been part of the... Uh, so, it's a sama lang? Yes, ma'am. It's, it's not a, a funding issue? Natin. Yes. It's so, in the... So, ang goal natin is by when may include yan? Uh, we have laid uh, the strategies in the Philippine Statistical Development Plan 2018 to 2023. So, by 2023, we should already be able to produce uh, the data regularly for... Tier two indicators, po. Because 2023, so that's three and a half years away. So if I will add 41 plus 24, that's 65 uh, percent, tama ba? 41, 60, 65, 65, 66 percent, palang tayo. 67 palang. Eh, si 20, eh, itong si tier three. Uh, Mahahabol yon for 23. 
for year 2023? Baka mahihirapan po, ma'am. Kasi the, even the international, the international level, uh, they are also developing the methodologies for this. Okay, so so it's it's understandable. Yes, po. So in other words, if I go back to one of your original slides na you, we set our own indicators, yes. with that 66% of indicators available, we can come up with more data-driven conclusions? Tama ba yes, ma'am. Uh, by 2023 po. Oo, <laughs> sufficient data. Actually, Kasi for me lang, ang, 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 ang kailangan ko lang naman is the basis to support your work. So when I, I intend to report regularly, if pwedeng quarterly, meron akong mga different aspects na nire-report sa colleagues ko, kailangan data-driven tayo nun. So what I'll need you to do is help help us focus on the information that we do have, information that is reliable, so that we can make progress even before we can complete the data. So in other words, focus tayo dun sa tier 1, something like that, no? What we have, okay. Uh, we have the next slide. Uh, on the next slide, actually, uh, we, we, we have already ensured that the other indicators with established methodologies but are not regularly generated, these are the tier two, uh, was considered in the Philippine Statistical Development uh, Plan 2018 to 2023. Uh, another uh, concern is the need to improve administrative-based data to serve as possible source of various data requirements in the SDGs framework. So we saw earlier that 66% are actually uh, coming from ad administrative uh, data. And so we have actually, but this is still going to the board, uh, come up with a mechanism for the harmonization of administrative records, registers, and information systems. So uh, when this will already be implemented, we are going to review the field health information system of the DOH, the EBEIS, uh, the higher education information system, admin data of overseas Filipinos and overseas uh, Filipino workers, registry of IPs and PWDs, we have to be able to come up with this one. Uh, the PSRTI has already taken uh, this as a research to come up with an administrative reporting system for IPs and PWDs because we need to disaggregate the SDGs by persons with disabilities and by IPs. Po. And then we have the administrative data on disaster statistics, also on crime statistics being gathered by the PNP. We also need to review all these administrative data systems under uh, what we call the MHARI so, so that we can make full use of this in the monitoring of the sustainable development goals. And then we also need to, uh, um, we also need a mechanism or and capability to collect data at the local level. So now that the CBMS uh, has already become a law, uh, we will uh, leverage on the CBMS to be the source of many of the SDG indicators at the local level, uh, municipal level at that. Uh, currently, the CBMS uh, that is being run by the DILG in uh, coordination with the CBMS network, there are already 39 SDG indicators uh, generated from there, but they have not come into the uh, uh, national government system yet. Uh, but uh, when we uh, will be fully implementing the CBMS with the PSA as the lead uh, agency po dito, and the data collectors will actually be the local government units. But uh, we will make sure that there will be validation and spot checking of the data that will be collected at the, at the municipal level. Then we hope to be able to generate many of the uh, indicators at the municipal level. Nasa ngayon po, ma'am, wala pa po tayong mga municipal level indicators except for population data, except for poverty data, uh, which is actually derived from uh, a statistical estimation, the small area estimates, uh, municipal level uh, poverty estimates. The latest of which was uh, is 2015 po yung SAE po natin ng poverty. So, we uh, have already uh, identified the core regional SDG indicators uh, wherein there are 70 indicators, but if we count uh, them uniquely, there are 62 indicators to monitor uh, 41 targets, uh, 41 out of the 97 uh, uh, Philippine uh, SDG targets and only for 14 goals out of the 17 uh, goals. So, um, 
here in the Philippines also, we have made a lot of progress because we are the first in uh, Asia and Pacific to uh, do the localization of the sustainable uh, development goals. Uh, we are trying to link the SDG indicators. Uh, and when we say linking of the MD SDG indicators, uh, this is what we call the horizontal and vertical alignment of the SDGs uh, that, that are determined through multi-stakeholder engagements and consultation. And this will allow us the identification of uh, indicators for monitoring from the municipal to the provincial to the regional to the national level and aligning these indicators with national and local development programs and policies. Uh, this strategy is to harmonize and synchronize SDG monitoring at all levels, thereby reducing duplicative effort and uh, resources. Uh, beyond the core indicators, of course, the local government units may determine or may identify indicators that are relevant to their uh, development uh, planning. Uh, right now, uh, we have done uh, localization at the provincial level, and this was the advocacy efforts uh, led by the DILG in 2017, and then the conduct of regional assessment workshops all over the Philippines in 2018. That's why we were, we were able to come up with the core regional SDG indicators. And there's also this effort from the PSRTI for the identification of indicators which the municipalities would be able to monitor also later on. So we have gone through 15 regions already to assess the readiness of the municipalities in terms of monitoring the SDGs, and only one more region has to uh, be done the assessment for the uh, SDG indicators. Question lang. So you, ha you, chose, you chose 44 cities and municipalities, ganun ba yun? How does, when you say you have 44 sa city? Yeah. Ah, dito ma'am, dun sa natapos po namin na uh, assessments at the municipal level, uh, there are uh, 44 SDG indicators common to cities and municipalities. 44 out of the 155 Philippine SDG indicators, and there are 49 ah. common indicators to the, okay, at the okay, provincial okay, level. Sige. So yeah. there are 155 Philippine indicators, 72 are common in the regional. Regions, yes. In other words, regions will compare 72 indicators, yes, every region. So you've been able, you will be able to call data from every region on these 72 indicators, yes, tama ba? Yes, ma'am. And then you'll be able to call 49 indicators from the provincial level. Each of the level provinces. Po. And 44, okay. Yes. So that means that down to the city and municipality level, every city and municipality is on board mm -hmm. with monitoring these 44 SDG indicators, tama ba? Yes, Senator. Uh, as far as the municipalities that have already submitted uh, their, uh, uh, I mean, uh, the, the, the SDG indicators that they are ready to monitor. Uh, we have a low uh, response rate for some municipalities, like 20% uh, of the municipalities are submitting. Uh, there are as high as 90% uh, of the municipalities are submitting in some regions. I'm talking uh, on a bi-region level. So we are asking the DILG because this is a collaborative activity with the DILG, the PSA, and Can the... You know, ano, kasi, okay, let me backtrack. Yes. On the provincial level, how's their submission? Uh, the rate of submission. Okay, <laughs> uh, because I want to help you. We can write directly to every province, okay? We'll do that. Okay, we'll yeah, give me your... You, you prepare the letter, yes. and I will endorse your letter to the governors, okay? okay? No, and then we will also endorse it to the congresswomen, the men and women, the representative uh, to endorse to their governors, okay? And then how do we do the cities? Uh, ilan ba yun? Maubos yung papel namin. 1,800, ma'am. <laughs> Email na lang tayo, huh? Yeah, but I'm sure you've contacted the League of Cities. Okay, we'll, we'll, ano na lang, we'll du duplicate your efforts. Oh, but we'll do that. I'll ask my team to work with you on that. Pwede ang time frame ko is a week or two. I mean, the only reason I'm making it or two just because pagdating na sa cities, marami na yun, pero yung provincial, pwede na yung ilabas yan within one week. Okay? Okay, sige, we'll do that. Okay. Maybe we can also include 
baka it can be a joint letter from from you from Neda no at the lead agency di ba yes. and then we will endorse it something like that okay uh, I forgot to mention po uh, what is good also in the SDG indicators these are allied to the provincial development results matrices of the of the different provinces uh, um, the core regional indicators are also aligned with the regional development plan results matrix uh, that is uh, understand the benefit of SDGs what is the bottom line? May bonus ba sila doon? May points ba sila doon sa ira nila? Dapat may ganun eh. For, may, meron ba? O wala, o wala. O anyway, di ba? Kasi parang dapat naka-align yun. Like, I'm just familiar kasi with how it works in uh, CHED and uh, sa mga SDCs, di ba? For them to get the, the corresponding uh, fu support, funding support for their programs, they have to submit. So, baka something like that can be done. Can, uh, can I just ask you to discuss that on the side with my team, no, on how we can, kasi sayang yan, pag hindi sila, hindi nila binibigyan ng pahalaga, there are those who on their own really would, no, but there are those who really find that they need to use their time on other things, and it, it will be, uh, if you can find a way to incentivize it, maganda yun. Thoughts lang, ma'am, baka doon sa SLGC, seal of, local good governance by the DILG, baka it can be included as one of the criteria uh, in that. Uh, okay. okay. So for the assessment of readiness uh, of selected municipalities and monitoring SDGs, we have prepared uh, these maps for, uh, say for Ilocos region, uh, the, the maps for Ilocos region, Central Luzon, Calabarzon, and Davao region. Yun pong mga red colored na mga areas dyan, uh, mababa po yung availability ng SDG indicators na yan. But for the green and the light green colored uh, map uh, areas in the map, mataas po yung availability uh, from 0.6% uh, to 100% of the SDG indicators po. Uh, na ready sila to, to report this one. Also, in the assessment of readiness, uh, the top 10 cities municipalities in terms of the availability of the SDG indicators can go as high as 87% for Bohol and Compostela Valley uh, and for Laguna and La Union, about 74% of the SDG indicators are available uh, in those uh, two municipalities. Okay, uh, now uh, let's move on to some of the other efforts uh, and next steps that uh, we have already uh, done. Uh, we have actually published uh, a brochure on the Philippine SDG indicators. Do we have samples? Yeah. Because they are the top 10 in terms of the availability, ma'am, in terms of their readiness to monitor. No, be... Uh, we went to all the regions, uh, we gathered the municipal local government units planning officers, and then uh, we asked them to fill out uh, the form uh, to assess whether these indicators are ready uh, to be monitored by the municipality. And then we tried to consolidate po. Uh, we found out that, say, in, uh, in Bohol, 87% of the 155 uh, indicators, they are ready to to monitor that. They can provide the data, they have the data sources for this one, but for uh, Laguna, for example, around 73%. For other, uh, for other areas, ma'am, for other uh, provinces, the availability is only 20%, uh, 16% out of the 155 indicators. Mm, tangible. Like, example what? Ano ba yung indicators niya na hindi kasi available sa iba? Wait lang po, kasi nasa worksheet yun, ma'am. Oh, later na lang. Later, you can later even give po. it to my staff. So as long as I just, I just want to be able to understand it more. Yes. Okay. Thank you po. Okay. Uh, yes, we have the brochure. Unfortunately, we were not able to bring a copy of this one. And then we have already created a PSA SDG uh, web page uh, dissemination. Uh, you would find there uh, the, about the SDGs, the Philippine SDG, and there's also a link to the Global Sustainable Development uh, Goals uh, in our website. Um, yeah, uh, on the next slide is uh, just another uh, part of that uh, uh, web page on SDG. 
um, starting next year, that is 2020, the Sustainable Development Goals, SDG Watch, we call it, will be updated every March uh, and September in accordance with the data flow that the PSA board has already approved. So the SDG Watch actually contains the baseline data and then the, the, the baseline data and then the updated uh, data and uh, the monitoring of the progress uh, of the SDG indicators will also be uh, included in the uh, SDG Watch uh, later on. So only two year, two data points uh, have uh, been collected so far. And then given the targets that was uh, determined uh, by the NEDA uh, for 2030, we shall be able to compute the progress uh, uh, of our achievements on the Sustainable Development Goals uh, indicators uh, later on. Okay, so the region, uh, the regional uh, PSA uh, also have come up with regional SDG watch, but uh, as in, <laughs> uh, just like in other situations, no, uh, there are leading regions uh, who were able to come up, like the Cordillera Administrative Region, they already have their regional SDG watch, Central Luzon, and then the National Capital Region. So we're coming up with a guideline uh, for all the PSA regional offices to be able to put up the regional SDG watch now that we already have the approved core regional indicators as approved by the PSA board. So we are already also creating an SDG database, and this is actually included in the SD in the OpenStat, uh, OpenStat platform of the uh, PSA. Uh, also, in our website, we have SDG story maps, wherein if you click a specific area in the map, you can have some uh, statistics. Uh, uh, like for example, this one is on uh, uh, Eastern Visayas. Uh, when you click Eastern Visayas on the map, lalabas po dyan yung poverty incidence po nila. Uh, for the baseline, 41.51, uh, that was in 2006, and then in 2015, uh, it improved uh, to 38.72 yung poverty incidence po ng Western Visayas. And you can click on other areas of the maps to be able to see uh, statistics po. Uh, we are uh, reconstructing or enhancing our SDG database, and uh, this is where we are going to lodge also all the, all the data uh, that uh, we collect for the Sustainable Development Goal Indicators from the baseline uh, and uh, every year um, data collection that uh, we do. So uh, these are just some of the illustrations on how the SDG database uh, would look like. Uh, moving on to the final uh, slide on some efforts and uh, next steps. Uh, we are going to, uh, we are actually having a, uh, a project with the ADB on SDG data disaggregation using big data. We're exploring the use of big data and this is actually on poverty uh, statistics and the, com the computation for the rural access index uh, that's part of the ADB project and then the assessment of pace of progress uh, following the SCAP uh, methodology we're still studying and the SCAP is actually giving us a uh, technical assistance on this and then the ongoing development of the SDG database also the updating of the SDG Watch, the database and the web page, and then the development, this one, we are really dreaming for this one, the development of the online data reporting platform so that we don't need to email every time, we don't need to provide the, 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 the worksheets to be filled out by the source agencies, but they are going to do, to do it online on a specific uh, date that we're going to, to open. To develop, you're still developing the program? Yes, ma'am. We are still, uh, uh, actually, it, there was a, a discussion with the UNICEF, but until now, they don't still have uh, uh, have the fund to, to, to help us. How much is it? Uh, <laughs> we'll just inform your staff, ma'am. Okay. <laughs> eh, mahina kayo, budget ngayon. So, <laughs> if Sige I were po. you, inform mo sila kaagad. Yeah, Sige, ma'am. Uh, and then, there will be regional uh, capacity building, uh, at the regional level for them to program be already exists. Is it a program Wala that exists in other countries? Yes, in other countries, ma'am. 
actually uh, Ayan, in, so is, is did you say who, who did you mention did you say UNICEF? UNICEF po, yes. Is it something that is available to them and then ibibigay lang nila or you have to tailor make it to our They have to tailor make it ma'am for us. Mm, yeah. Magpo-provide ba sila ng funding supposedly? Yes po. Yes po. Ah uh, so you don't need funding from us, we just need funding uh, from them. Ma'am actually in the previously we have been uh uh, proposing for a budget for the SDGs monitoring, but it's always slashed by the DGM. Oh, kaya nga, ano nga yun? <laughs> Sige, pakibigay na lang Sige, ASAP, ma'am. ASAP okay. please. Thank you po. Thank you. And then, of course, uh, the 155 indicators, hindi po ito nak nakataga sa bato because every time that we are go, we are able to generate regular uh, data for tier 2 indicators, we need to update our uh, list of uh, Philippine SDG indicators. And when there will be methodologies developed for the tier 3 indicators, we also need to update and generate these indicators later on. That's why this year, uh, uh, Pag natapos na po kami ng release ng poverty statistics po by, by December, first week, we will already be starting the review of the Philippine SDG indicators so that we can add those that have been developed and delete those that the source agencies uh, would tell na hindi na yan yung indicator na generate namin. We need this uh, indicator rather than that. So, yun po ma'am. Thank you very much po. want to present uh, you may proceed uh, thank you your honor uh, siguro I go straight to slide number six wala po yung slide two the, anyway, <laughs> kasi the first six slides is just uh, preliminaries of uh, you know what is SDG what is SCP and why we are uh, focusing on uh, on uh, on SDG 12 and you already mentioned it earlier it's a uh, actually the most interconnected of all the uh, the goals of all the SDGs. Uh, when we formulated the um, Philippine Development Plan, so this was back in 2016, uh, we were not really that familiar with the sustainable consumption and production. And so what we did was for, in Chapter 20, naglagay kami ng placeholder that uh, we will be formulating a Philippine, an action plan for sustainable consumption and production. Sinaligyan lang namin ang placeholder so that it will be in our work plan, etc., etc. So, and uh, um, as you know, we are already uh, finalizing actually that Philippine action plan uh, towards the end of the year, tapos na yan. So, sa, ano po, sa slide number six. So, yeah. Okay, so next, so just why is uh, SCP important in the Philippines? So this slide tells us, uh, okay, <laughs> this slide tells us na yung ating economic growth trajectory, as uh, you know, in fairness, as re it's really been on an um, upward, uh, sharp upward trajectory. So during the 80s, it was just a 2% average for the 10 years. And then, naging 2.8, naging 4.5, and then naging 6.2%. So, it's been actually growing. Pa papanik talaga ng papanik yung ating uh, growth trajectory. But this one actually came with a cost. No? One is the rapid urbanization. Uh, it's estimated that by 2050, mga 60% na will be living in uh, urban areas. Right now, we're looking at around 50%. Tama? 50% already in the urban areas. In terms of population, uh, between 2018 and 2022, we are uh, we forecast that there will be additional 8.3 million Filipinos, and by 2040, uh, ang population natin is uh, projected to reach 140 million. G ganun karami. So, uh, so in terms of uh, you know, you have 140 million, and then 60 percent of them will be living in mga densely. Uh, congested na, ano, na <laughs> urban centers. So as a result, next please, you have air and water quality are declining. Uh, as you can see here, yung, yung dito, yeah, left, yeah, okay, <laughs> left na taas. Yung emissions dito, as you can see, yung pinakamalaking uh, emissions uh, really comes from the uh, energy sector and then susunod is your transport sector. Then with respect to water quality, this one we already know that uh, um, yung water quality of the priority water bodies natin is declining and most are actually deemed to be unfit 
for their uh, intended uses. Next, please. Almost all. Meron tayong number? Yeah. Nakalagay kasi almost all <laughs> are unfit for, uh, no. yeah. We'll check on the details. Okay. Next is on solid waste generation. The estimate is that in 2016, 40,000 tons of waste is generated in the Philippines per day. And this one can fill up 106 swimming pools per day. Yung ganun karami yung waste natin. Uh, translates to about 0.4 kilograms of waste generated per person per day. And if you look at the uh, sources of this uh, solid waste, almost 60% is actually being generated by residential areas. 57% uh, on commercial, 12%. Uh, and then industrial is only 4%. So actually, if we want to reduce uh, waste generation, ang entry point talaga should really be on the, on the households. Um, I just want to mention something. Uh, and I don't think we need um, PSA to do the math for us, but why not? We might as well have an official statement from you. Some time ago, my daughter pointed out to me an article which I agreed with her on the conclusion of the writer that the individual efforts, it, it was made by a foreign um, writer, the individual efforts barely matter. So it, it, was, it was very, it's very negative in the sense that uh, the reality is the individual efforts you make hardly contribute to the, to the bottom line. So it's been about two years since we read that and up to now, hindi pa makaget over yung anak ko na walang contribution, yung mga minimal efforts na ginagawa daw natin isa-isa. Pero when you look at this number, 0.40 per day, so yun nga, can we compute that, di ba? 0.40 per day times 365 days times kahit isang household lang, five people, or somebody do the math, di ba? And then, can we have a press release coming out of this hearing na it does make a difference kung ganun. And even if you say, um, oh, sige, kunyari, ako sabihin kong siguro nasa point two na ako kasi meron naman ako mga effort na ganito, di ba? Na wala na, wala nang pet bottle na lumalabas sa akin. Uh, maybe sa iba, nakakadalawa sila sa isang araw, di menos na sa akin yon or whoever else, no? Um, yun nga, ilan pa rin yun. So, let, let's do the numbers so that we can make it relevant to an individual na ito yung kaya mong i-contribute. And if you times that by even, even if you say only 1% of the population would bother. O, ilan yun, di ba? So, let's, let's, let's do something like that. Anyway, please proceed. I just found this very, ano, very enlightening. And then next, uh, I just want to uh, just briefly uh, um, touch on uh, SCP in the Philippines Development Agenda. So, next please. First of all, this is also the reason why we are uh, so keen on uh, SDG 12, because we think that it is also uh, foundational to achieving our ambition, matatag, maginhawa, panatag na buhay, not the least of which is because, you know, kahit yung waste generation lang, eh, it leads to floods, it leads to all sorts of, uh, of things, uh, illnesses, lahat ng mga to, which actually uh, constrains our uh, uh, ability to achieve this uh, this ambition. Uh, next, siguro next na lang din. Uh, we do, we already actually have laws and policies related to SCP. So we have identified here the major ones. So like for uh, SDG 12.4 and 12.5. Sorry, I just want to make a note, no? Um, Panote na lang na sana next time laging nandito yung mga youth groups natin. Because, like, I want to be able to immediately say, I'll bring it back to that slide. No need to go there, but I'm referring to that slide. Na, hingin, hingi tayo sa kanila. Kasi meron silang mga initiatives, eh. During the last hearing, they mentioned, I didn't get to give them enough time to elaborate. That's why I had wanted them to be here. So, in the next hearing, call them so that we can go back to this and ask them specifically, have you done anything of this? And not just them, no? We have other groups, like Insula Mother Earth. Ask them what what uh, initiatives are already out there. Let's not reinvent the wheel. And then I'm, I'm sure si DPI is also familiar. And dami, and dami. Then maybe sa mga, we can also uh, invite some LG representatives who have their own initiative. So that uh, on that alone, on, on this point four, okay? On that point four, I just want to know, any initiatives so that we can make it very realistic 
to to everyone listening to us. It's not just numbers. Kasi kung ang lalabas lang na data, eh, katulad ng binigay ng PSA, lahat tayo aantukin. <laughs> Sa totoo lang, di ba? You have to make it realistic, eh. We have to make it um exciting and uh, um, to a certain extent, even entertaining for for uh, for the general public, especially the youth. Okay, let's let's proceed. So this slide actually just uh, tells us that uh, the, supposedly this is not not new to us. No, we've already had uh, several uh, laws uh, and policies related to SCP. Uh, we, I just want to to point out that uh, two of this, which is uh, let's say EO three hundred one on sustainable public procurement, it's just an executive order, and so far, hindi naman talaga na po comply. So, baka pwede natin gawin na lang ng law. <laughs> okay. And then, uh, <laughs> is that I was making a note to myself. An ano yung sinasabi mong baka pwedeng gawin na law? Which one was that? On sustainable public procurement. It's just an executive order. Uh, series of 2004 ah, yeah, pa nga yeah, ito. Eh. Sige, yeah. sure. So, this um, is actually the green public yeah. procurement. Pero hindi masyadong na-enforce. Sige, sige. Uh -oh. Let's, mm -hmm. uh, we can highlight that. In, uh, we can turn that into a hearing for that bill in particular. Um, I'm sure maraming lalabas dito. So I can even initially hear it and then PWG natin kaagad yan. Okay? Sige, noted ha, please. Okay. Ang idea please. kasi namin dito is that government is actually a big uh, demander of goods and services. Mm -hmm. So if government will demand... Ang laking that, uh, bagay na, no? Diba? Ang laking bagay Ang laking yan. change na kaagad. Uh, na lahat yeah. dapat sustainable materials. Sige. Mga can I get a copy so that if I have questions now, can somebody get a copy? So if I have questions now, pwede na natin i-discuss. Okay, thank you for that. Sige, go ahead. Please proceed. And then, uh, right now, we have the uh, SEC Memorandum Circular on uh, sustainability reporting, but this is just for publicly listed corporations. Yes. Yeah. Pero we have I think, SEC, no, you'll report uh, later. Yeah, I'll, I'll give you time to mm -hmm. talk about it. Okay. Yeah. We also have the Green Jobs Act, which is actually uh, more cross-cutting. Ang nagiging problema ngayon is... Uh, uh, with respect to the eco labeling, so mayro mga okay. ane, eh, may mga parang a sequence of uh, strategies mo na that needs to be done in order for it to be fully implemented. So we still need uh, a sequence of uh, a, a series of studies para dito. Yeah. Suspend lang thirty seconds. Um, okay, I was just checking on something so that we can uh, look into the implementation of the green jobs uh, in more detail. And then let me quickly jump to um, the others. Any comment on the other two, the first two on your uh, no, slide? Yeah, the, the first one uh, on, on waste and chemicals management, actually um, the problem here is uh, again one of, of compliance. Uh, and if you, uh, many of this will have to be implemented by uh, LGUs themselves. Kungari yung mga sanitary landfill, uh, yung mga um, wastewater uh, treatment facilities. And uh, what they would tell us, the reason why uh, mababa yung compliance is because of the lack of uh, funds. Yun, okay. yun din ang sasabihin nila dito. Kasi also in the law itself, there's supposed to be, a, DNR is supposed to put up a fund na doon sila kukuha. Would you be able to give us what are those funding requirements para man lang matake up sa budget? I don't know if, it, if it's huge, then it's gonna be hard to insert it now. But if it's not that, pag na-breakdown naman yon and meron, is that something you can find, get for us in, in, in within the week sana? Kasi next week na yung budget namin, ha? Sige. <laughs> yeah. And in, in addition to this, or I'm tell us which, which particular um, division within DNR you're referring to para matawagan din namin. Yeah. Ang isang uh, particular problem din dito is with respect to the uh, availability of the space to use for uh, the sanitary landfill, for instance, uh, kulang na ng space yung iba. Yun. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, okay. Kasi meron namang, ano, eh, may, may window sila, don't window uh, in the DBP. So, actually, the LGUs can... Uh, can, can secure a loan from the, the DB, DBP, pero marami ang hindi rin kumukuha doon dahil wala naman silang space okay. on where to put Hold up. Hold on the, again. Yeah.
can okay can um can we just uh ask you then to maybe my staff can approach you when you're not when you're done speaking to just discuss that there's so many issues here you know so i don't wanna i don't i don't wanna forget anyone um on that particular one on on uh the sanitary landfills and all that to just get a little more details from you so that we we i, I know how to park that issue and proceed okay uh, I was just reminded that there is also a hanging issue with respect to the Clean Air Act. Because uh, one of the uh, strategies we have identified here is uh, really the waste to energy na, na strategy so that we can have this uh, you know, the circular economy going. Actually, I just came from Copenhagen and I, I saw their waste to energy plant. Um, yeah, it's, ve it's very interesting. But technically, would that, that's an incinerator, right? That's an incinerator. So I just really wanted to have that discussion going also. And I also mentioned it to Senator uh, Gachalian, who's the chairman of the Committee on Energy. And he's also familiar because he saw a similar plant in Singapore naman. So yun nga, let's, let's have these separate uh, meetings uh, or hearings on this so that we can uh, discuss it further. Because this one, this one in particular was of interest to me because the design of that uh, plant, uh, they also made it a go-to place and uh, they designed a ski a ski lift so it's a nature it's a park uh, the ski lift starts from the top so it's it's an artificial turf so it's not even s snow uh, it's parang parang turf nung football field tapos um, they will provide you with skis and uh, and a uh, snowboard <laughs> to go down and uh, hindi ko lang nagawa kasi umulan nung araw na yon <laughs> so yeah let's discuss that further these things kasi will be more specific to other committees we have but um, if it if it is really if it really touches on sustainability then I can request to have a joint hearing with them so we can focus on that especially if it requires a change in policy or or um, I, I can really um, try to uh, not try to uh, get involved in that if it is on the sustainability issue so maybe what you can also do is make it make a list of these things that you feel touch on sustainability, even if it goes beyond this, and what do you think we can do about it? Or my team can you know, can sit down with you on the site even after you present and start looking at it. Thank you. Uh, next, please. Now, this slide actually just uh, shows the different uh, programs and initiatives that we already have related to the SDG. Of course, we already know about the Boracay rehabilitation, and then this has been replicated in other uh, major tourism areas in, um, in Pang Panglao, in uh, Coron, El, El Nido yata, yeah. <laughs> and then uh, transforming the value, the tourism value chain. This is supposed to be already yeah. included let, in their Let me just plan. make another um, intervention lang. Uh, do you actually, would it be directly sa tourism or are you also monitoring the sustainability the sustainable tourism program are you also or it's more of sa kanila na sa kanila na okay leaders no you're not even following it totally sa kanila you are oh yun na nga eh. so in that on that note kasama pa rin kayo oh sige kasi my my the way i see this whole um the, the whole sustainability program is you really need a separate body monitoring and working with each of the agencies because the agencies that's not the only thing that they're doing so I wanted to be sure that uh, I, I also want to ensure that there's no other agency but NEDA diba, who would be on top of that so you can also tell us how we can strengthen what you're doing do you need manpower do you need you know because okay sige, go the, the other part of that slide actually shows uh, these are ma many uh, private sector na initiatives. Because I'm very interested in tourism. Um, so what I wanted to come out of this is, you know, we, we can have a, a joint hearing no, with the other committee. But um, I, I would like you to go, because it's very tangible. Masarap to easy, because it's very easy for us to visualize what we think of a clean, beautiful, sustainable beach, right? Tourism, anyway. So I want to use that as an example. Um, na you would really present the indicators, you know, and then and uh, uh, the department can also come up with what whatever. I I don't know kung gano kayo ka aligned, and then what are the uh, um, existing destinations and where they are at. 
that's really what I'd like to see. Para wala na tayong reinventing the wheel, de ba? Parang let's 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 gather them all, let's have them uh, present to us and uh, really try to move forward. Because the nice thing is, um, there I think they have the momentum already. Like I I I see on social media how I think the better example panga at least in terms of ano ah, in terms of what I've seen, uh, in terms of uh, efforts by the locals is uh, Shargao. Because um, it's driven by the, to me lang, this is just my, ano, this is not a academic uh, or a professional uh, analysis. This is just a visual, my visual appreciation of what I see. But it seems to be driven by a natural desire of both local and, and uh, non-locals, but Filipinos who have decided to make it their home. And they've really chosen to, to highlight uh, sustainable practices. Parang in-embrace nila by choice. And yun yung the best kasi hindi mo ipipilit sa kanila eh. Ginus, ginugusto nila eh. And yun yung pinapractice nila. So, I wanna, I wanna try to, you know, find out how does that happen, how do you reinvent, etc., etc. Okay? So, talking of uh, not reinventing the wheel, <laughs> ito yung mga private initiatives already and uh, we can actually call some uh, some of the best practices from this. Uh, pero napaka limited lang nga ng ano nila. Uh, like uh, the sustainable diner project, this is by WWF. Uh, solid waste management programs. Uh, again, you have several LGUs na, na may ano, na merong uh, best practice nito. And of course, uh, uh, Mother Earth, for instance. And then next is the, uh, the action plan on uh, sustainable consumption and production. Next, please. Next. Yeah, okay. So this, this is the strategic framework for this uh, PAP and SCP. The vision is uh, for us to have improved living conditions of current and future generations of Filipinos towards a matatag maginawa panatag na buhay. And the goal is that more Filipinos produce and consume green goods and services to accelerate the shift towards sustainable and climate smart practices and lifestyles. We are looking at two major outcomes here. The first is that economic, social, and environmental impacts of production and consumption processes need to be valued. So right now, we've just had several uh, pilot studies in the past uh, valuing this uh, ecosystem services or environmental services or natural capital accounting, but it hasn't been institutionalized. Na naka pilot stage nang siya. And this one needs to be done because if we want people to internalize the cost and benefits of their production and consumption, kailangan na ba value natin siya, yun, yung impact on the, on the environment. And then the second the big outcome is that uh, uh, the equitable and efficient resource use. So how do you do that? How do you get people to value that? Uh, PSA yung magbabalue. And then <laughs> it will be disseminated that, uh, let's say, when, when you ride as, uh, your motorized vehicle correct, from correct, year to correct. year, correct. I mean, you I've, contribute uh, uh, I've, I've used that data um, that's provided to me by, normally sa health economics, they provide me with data, pero it's very specific to yung need cost. So for example, ano yung cost ng, ng liver disease? Di ba? Binibigay, binibigay sila sa akin, cost ng uh, economic burden ng alcoholism. So that's the same thing that you're saying. Ah, okay, okay. So, when you say PSA ang magbibigay, I didn't know that. Ginagawa niya pala yun? Hindi. Ah, hindi nga. <laughs> da, da, da. Let me correct. Let me correct that. Uh, like I said, uh, dalawa to eh. So, you have a natural resources, okay? And then you have the ecosystem uh, services accounting. Uh, sa ecosystem services accounting, nakapilot stage pa lang naman siya at the UN Statistical Commission. We were part of the pilot study back in 2012-2013, if I'm not mistaken. You said natural cap capital accounting. Again, we were part of the pilot study. This was back in 2000s pa ito. Baka nga 1990 pa. Kumbaga, wala na rin yung mga taong nakakaalam. So, if we want to do this, there is a need to, to have a specific unit, a dedicated unit within the PSA to do this. Wouldn't mm -hmm. a lot of the, I uh, know, a lot of the, um, a lot of these activities that I feel would be high impact, um, 
these are this this can be this is the same whatever country are in other words no need na paggasto sa natin kung pareho lang. So for example, now I'm just thinking, what would be relevant to the people in this office? Well, malaman nila na every time sila sumakay ng elevator, <laughs> ano ba yung energy na nagagamit noon as opposed to yung benefit sa kanila na maglakad sila. Eh I would think the UN should sana come up with that those those numbers instead of tayo isa-isa pa nating gagawin dahil all over the world eh common naman 'yon, 'di ba? So something like that. And then I I, I was just reading Um, the link to an article that my staff sent me on WHO recommendation of 15 minutes of walking, di ba? It will, ano daw, it will um, increase uh, economic pro productivity. So yung parang ganun, I think that that was WHO naman. So yung mga ganun, meron naman tayo. I think what we can do na lang is um, uh, um, extract that available info, use what's available muna. I, I don't mind if we come up with our own, but di ba, why we don't really... Let's come up with something interesting and have, ano, uh, have blast this out um, uh, in terms of, ano, in terms of um, awareness so that people know, nga, as you said, they have to be able to see it. Pero feeling ko, andyan naman yun eh. So, kunyari, I'll, I'll skip to DTI. Um, every time you use a sachet, di ba? Every time na mag-shampoo ka sa sachet, magkano yung nawawala? Ang mahal nun ah. Mahal na nga sa'yo, nagko-contribute ka pa sa basura. So, all of these little things, there's, there's so much... It's it's not that hard to ano, pwede tayong magpa-contest, kuha tayo ng mga college students na gumawa ng infographics, etc. So again, paki na lang, let's have a separate discussion on that. We have a separate study being done. This is really uh, in support of the Climate Change Commission kasi we will be we will be submitting the nationally determined contribution to the Paris Agreement on Climate Change again towards the end of the year. Maraming ganap sa towards the end of the year. So uh Uh, we have a, a graph there. Siguro when we're ready, we can also uh, have a small meeting with you. Which, the, kasi pag, uh, whenever we present to the uh, international bodies, um, ang data natin is that Philippines con contributes 0.37% of uh, carbon emissions ng buong mundo. Ang contribution natin is 0.37%. Uh, but that data is actually medyo, ano na yan, dated na yan, 2015. But because of the rapid growth that we've had the past years, actually, halos nag, ano, dum, dum, tumaas. Oh. Hindi ko naman sabihin dumoble. No? Pero malaki ang tinaas ng ating uh, growth. And this is the thing that uh, we need to closely monitor as well. Uh, kasi kung halimbawa, if we go uh, the way of uh, sustained, fast sustained growth, and we do not change all those uh, you know, major contributors of growth, Yon, and uh, their production processes, etc., etc., then uh, ang taas na magiging ano natin, contribution natin to the emission, of course, also to the detriment of uh, our, uh, our own people. Yon. Can, you ha can you send me that data, especially in comparison with um, ASEAN? Yung ano, carbon, or I'm sure that's even available online, no? may link ba dyan? Just let us know, please. Okay. Okay. Now, for each of these uh, outcomes that uh, we want to, to achieve, meron kami tinatawag na nodes para comprehensive yung strategy. The first is there needs to be policy and regulation. Okay. So, kahit na ibaban lang natin or we encourage something, something. And then the second is there has to be R&D, innovation, and technology because we want to edit their choices. That's the idea. We want them to go for the sustainable practice, whether production or consumption. But we need to be able to provide the alternative. And it should be affordable alternative. Para hindi nila, uh, you know, they won't choose the other one. Then there has to be the infrastructure. We can also um, revise the infrastructure that we have. So sabi ko nga, may nakita ako nga, ang ganda-gandang um, picture. Let's say, uh, kalsada. Uh, so usually what happens is meron kang maliit na dinededicate sa bike lane, di ba? Tapos ilang lanes lang sa vehicles. Paano kung kalahatiin mo yun? <laughs> diba? Kalahatiin mo ang bike lane. So parang just revising the infrastructure design. Uh, Na-encourage mo kaagad na dito kayo. And then, you know, make, make it safe probably. Make it, uh, you know, conducive to biking, walking, yun. Then you encourage already that uh, sustainable consumption. Uh, and then the promotion and education is really important. So, Tingin namin dapat kompleto ito, 
this, all these nodes so that we can really you know, encourage this uh, sustainable consumption and production. So meron kaming example dito. So uh, for instance, with respect to uh, valuation of the economic, social, and environmental impacts, in the short term, uh, we need to institutionalize the natural capital accounting uh, in the PSA. We need to conduct policy analysis also using natural capital adjusted macroeconomic indicators, policy review probably. And then in the medium term, it's about incorporating this NCA in development planning and in the long term, evaluate the implementation. Um, with respect to R&D and technology, again, to help in this valuation, we need to conduct many of these uh, uh, biocapacity and carrying capacity assessments. So uh, we at the NEDA, we have done the uh, carrying capacity study for Baguio City. Ang isusunod namin is Tagaytay City. Uh, but I think this needs to be done, uh, you know, across <laughs> so many uh, of these uh, major cities and especially yung mga tourism sites natin. And then establish a comprehensive life cycle analysis program so that when we buy a product, uh, alam natin hanggang doon sa dulo ng disposal niya. Yun, yung magiging, hindi lang yung ano, yun. So, uh, so that is uh, in the short term. In the medium term, roll out the methodology and guidelines for the LGU so they can uh, do it themselves. And then of course, in the longer term, uh, periodic updating lang. Uh, with respect to the infrastructure, um, we need to have knowledge management platforms. Para, li like you said, many of this, meron na sigurong study niyan, uh, ang kailangan lang natin is a knowledge management platform na ma-access natin to. And there has to be interoperable na infrastructure to support the NCA. There's also a need to have uh, many of this uh, mga measuring the air quality, water quality, you know, strategically, strategically placed all across the country. Uh, and then, of course, uh, promotion education, that's uh, uh, straightforward naman yan. Next naman, uh, ito yung ano, efficient and equitable resource use. In the short term, we are proposing that we need to review the environmental and business permitting requirements along the lines of the SCP. Kasi uh, this, uh, this, pr this problem became very, very uh, prominent uh, do sa Boracay. Kasi they were permitted to do the construction. Wala pala silang sewerage system, wala silang wastewater treat, mga ganon. Kasi hindi naman record. Hindi record sa LGU. Eh, wala naman sa, sa DOT na yung, ano, yung, yung turf, yun, yung jurisdiction to do that. So there really is a need to, uh, to look at this. Yan. And then uh, also review existing laws relevant to SCP to enhance uh, compliance. Uh, yung Green Procurement Act, the Clean Air Act, which uh, we think is ito nga yung babanggado sa gusto nating waste to energy, and then the Hazardous Waste Act. Medium term, we need to harmonize and streamline uh, policies and regulation. And then in the long term, we need to have that periodic assessment of policies. With respect to R&D, we need to de develop alternative technologies, products, and choices that would encourage the shift to SCP. We should probably prioritize all those very, very harmful na, na substances na talaga ang policy natin is to ban this. Pero, yun nga, kailangan meron tayong pampalit. Uh, then, of course, we need to support the widespread adoption and commercialization of the alternative technologies and products. And then, again, periodic updating nito. Green now, kasi yung next speaker naman natin is DTI you know, and SEC. So, um, before I forget, on, on itong uh, what are the alternatives, I've always had a problem with um, the no plastic. Kasi there's very, there, there was always... It, it was n hardly ever accompanied <laughs> with a plan. <laughs> and that's why I, I always hesitated when people ask me, oh, but di ka, di ka mag-file ng bill? I was like, because I need to have a sustainable plan. So like in cities, nag-shift sila sa single-use na paper, which is, I, I, I don't have the technical knowledge to say categorically it is just as bad, but I do know it is not good. Because it's single use, uh, the trees are also a very scarce resource. Ganun parate. And then in some malls, they would even have like a no plastic Friday. And I'm like, what's the purpose of that? To ano daw, to bring awareness, to bring your own bag. 
So sabi ko, but bringing a bag has to be a habit. Even me, na sobra kong interes, pag wala yan within my grasp, ano na, nasa grocery ka na, babalik ka pa sa kotse mo, o kung wala rin sa kotse mo, ang gagawin mo. So, if it's not a habit, how can you develop a habit for every Friday? So, anyway, I'm, I'm just saying that I'm not um, averse to initiatives, mm -hmm. but there's really a lack of, of a long-term plan. So, I really feel that, although I'm, I'm a big believer in it being um, civil society driven, pero kulang eh. So, kailangan mag-step up tayo and that, that particularly would be sa DTI talaga kasi ano na yan eh. Uh, production and consumption. So, and then, okay. Uh, in terms of infra infrastructure, then we can, uh, ito na example pa ni kanina, uh, provide infrastructure support to induce the shift to SCP, like your elevated walkways, bike lanes, affordable e, uh, vehicle technologies, and then we uh, promote uh, urban biodiversity through the um, Green 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 program. In the medium term, provide incentives and rewards to LGUs with uh, best practices uh, and replicate and scale up uh, urban biodiversity initiatives. Then we need to do impact evaluation over the longer term. And then with respect to promotion education, just intensify the promotion of uh, product eco-labeling. We have already done this for many of the white goods, mga appliances, yung energy efficiency ratio, di ba? Pero sa mga ano, wala tayong masyadong ano, wala, wala pa tayong eco-labeling na ginagawa. No, pero yun nga, kahit sa sachet pa lang eh, maglabas na kayo sa social media, mga X, eh, di ba? Kasi like, even though sabi mong it's very um, consumer friendly, pero sabi ko nga sa iyo, sa Siargao nga, yung mga young people doon, willing sila magbuhat ng one liter na jug nila para hindi sila bibili ng plastic bottle. If it if it is in their consciousness then, madali sa kanilang gawin din 'yon. Yeah. Uh, over the medium term, what we need is uh, to have more of the third party green certification programs uh, in the services sector and in the green jobs. Uh, kasi sa ngayon yun ang kulang, that's why we cannot fully implement the green jobs. And also, so that's why we cannot fully implement the green procurement, uh, yeah, although it's just an EO. In, in the succeeding talks that we have, even internally, even if it's not a hearing, can you, ano, can you come up with um, uh, best practices and um, best practices in other countries, just the green jobs? Interested ako, Jenny. I want to see how they've pursued it. We're actually the first country to have a Green Jobs Act. So ah, actually, really? okay. sa, sa, but, sa, but, sa, tayo lang yung meron, pero... Tayo ang tinitingnan nila how we will be implementing okay. it. But then, then this is where I'll say, like, even though I don't like to compare ourselves nga with mga the Scandinavian countries, can we just see, like, what would be a green job there based on our law? Diba? Ano yung pasok doon so that even though they don't have a law, but by... by it's just easy for them to transition into such a thing. Baka nga they don't even need a law kasi nga madali sa kanilang gawin, ano yun na very doable, okay? So parang i-merge mo ngayon yung tayo, na nanguna tayo, na may law tayo, pero sila, they're doing it already because it's it's a lifestyle ano for them already. Okay. Okay. Next is uh, action specific to policy and regulation. So first, uh, yung minansyon ko na kanina is review of existing ENR laws to enhance compliance. So, yung um, RA uh, 6969 on the toxic and hazardous and nuclear waste, and then the uh, Ecological Waste Management Act. Actually, I, you know, I think what I'll do now is um, mm -hmm. I'll ask the team, baka you can have a TWG where you really inc invite different stakeholders to submit their proposed amendments to the existing laws so that we can move forward. Kasi matatagal na rin to eh. It's high time naman din na ma-review to. These are, all of these key environmental acts, clean air, clean water, and solid waste were enacted before I became a senator. And that was 15 years ago. So high time naman din talaga to review. Although there are oversight committees, so I don't want to overstep, but yung sa atin nga is in terms of uh, sustainability. Next. We are proposing the creation of a mechanism for uh, multi-stakeholder uh, engagement. Uh, there, there is already a resolution by the Social Development Committee of the NEDA Board 
for the DBCC uh, for for the DBCC to create a subcommittee on the SDGs. Kasi hinahanapan namin kung saan siya mas maganda. Pinakamaganda siya sa DBCC actually. So, so para direct niya yung, yung link niya kaagad sa budget, ganyan. Uh, but there's a need for a special secretariat for SDG coordination, monitoring, research, and you specifically yeah. write that as a letter to me as your recommendation. Oh, sure, 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 okay. sure. Uh, 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 as of yeah. then, within the week. Ah, sige, thank you. <laughs> yeah, kasi right now, meron lang kami parang ad hoc na, na ginawa sa, sa NEDA, but you know, given the many other assignments, na, na ano eh, kaya medyo natatagal lang siya. Yeah. So anyway, uh, next please. So tomorrow will be our uh, launching of the of the SCP. Tapos uh, for the Philippine Economic Society, ito yung aming uh, theme: uh, Our Planet's Health, the Future's Wealth. And then also just to inform you, na meron din tayong SDG website, but this one focuses on the the initiatives. Uh, the VNR report also is there. Yung mga plans nandoon din. We also provide a link to the SDG watch of the uh, of uh, of the PSA. So, yan yung QR code namin. And uh, ang aming hashtag for beginning tomorrow is hashtag walang sayang. Yan. So, we will have a, a plenary presentation tomorrow at the Philippine Economic Society annual meeting. And then on November 25, uh, this is the BSP sponsored naman na uh, EFL nila, e Economic and Financial Literacy Week. We will focus more on the yung pagtitipid. Uh, kasi nga, economic and financial literacy. So, doon namin ina, ano, tinitwik yung SCP in light of, uh, you know, yeah, using that consideration. That's all, uh, Your Honor. Uh, Follow-up work na gagawin. Thank you for that report. So, time check lang. It's 2.28. I need to finish just before 3 to give me time to prepare for session. So, um, siguro mga... 10 to 15 minutes CDTI and then SEC then, mga 10 minutes. Okay, and ah, my Philippine business for environment. Okay, in which case I will try to, in, I will try to uh, uh, limit my intervention. So, mga 10 minutes each na lang, less than 10 minutes each, sorry for that. Anyway, CDTI naman, nandamang dito mga concerns. Well, eh, let's proceed na. Yes, good afternoon, Madam Chair. Uh, we are very happy that we have finally found a champion on sustainable consumption and production. Uh, the Department of Trade and Industry through the Consumer Protection Group has begun our active work on promoting sustainable consumption and production. In the late 2017, we proposed this to the ASEAN, and then DTI was elected to, to spearhead the promotion in the whole of ASEAN, including Japan. So we had uh, an ASEAN-Japan project on the promotion of sustainable consumption, this, there was an as ASEAN Japan Integration Fund. So they funded the, pro the whole project, which began in, in March 2019. We had a workshop in Japan together with all the ASEAN member states. Isn't that quite interesting? Because I'm trying not to say much, but when I go to Japan, two things always surprise me pa rin. They don't have trash cans around. So I'm like, wala pong basura tong mga to. But then, if you go to their food court, which is the best in the world, lahat balot, balot, balot. So I'm like, sobrang unsustainable yung practice nila. Pero walang trash can na nasa gilid. So I go, where does all this paper go? They'll wrap your product like three times. So I'm just surprised that conscious pala sila. Uh, actually, ma'am, in after the workshop that we had in Japan, we wanted to bring Philippine retailers to Japan so that they can copy and benchmark. But of course. DTI will have to spend time and we didn't have the money so we cannot bring them. We didn't want the retailers to to spend or for all, for everything. Of course, there will be cost on our part, but we have not gone to pursuing that plan yet. Yes, ma'am. 
more about it, but obviously the time's not enough. So tell me more about it another time. Yes, ma'am. Okay. In the ASEAN... Uh, or do you have a briefer, like, on, on that whole trip? Can you just give me yes, a copy? Yes, ma'am. We, yeah, we prepared... Uh, it was part of the green book that we have prepared in the DPI CPG. So okay. we have already gathered uh, enough materials okay. so that we can educate because the... I will not make the presentation anymore. I'll just make a discussion. Okay. So it what will be I'll fast. do naman is, uh, I'll, I'll give you enough time again in the next one, but yes, at least highlight what you want but to highlight. But the highlight here is that we want to educate consumers. We put consumer protection in the heart of sustainable development, uh, sustainable consumption and production because uh -oh. it is the consumer behavior that affects yeah. all the entire SDG 17. Um, consumer choices are supposed to be made considering the society, the community, the environment, and of course, planet Earth. But uh, we cannot, like I heard this yesterday, we cannot value what we do not understand. And come to think of it, I think only government people would understand what SDG 12 is and the other advocacy groups. Um, that's why we have also been proposing to the DepEd to include this in the grade school curriculum so that it becomes a way oh. of life for our students for the young and that so then when, when they grow up it becomes a lifestyle for them and then we can probably help change the planet by but then. Did you for me it's so simple eh? Find me memes and, and uh, infographics that are, you know, animated thirty seconds. You know, and dali dali lang yun. every time you buy plastics and natatapon. Let's not even reinvent. Can I just challenge everybody here to see what's available out there? There's always stuff already there. Um it then, is a challenge for DPI that people hear us but they do not either they do not listen or they do not understand so it has to be imbibed in the young we believe but what is your medium in telling the young that's why I'm asking uh, for memes and and uh, um, what do you call this uh, in uh, fun fun ex, ex, uh, infographics because that's so easy something in lang nun. Um, it I mean show me what you have and we, we can have another session where you know, it doesn't even have to be a hearing where we can go through that. Anyway, we can do that next week. Um, and then we have budget, eh? but I, I can I can host a meeting in my office about this. Okay, ma'am, we will we can give the briefer to your staff so that you can fully understand. Anyway, uh, we are we're thinking of, uh, of course, the role of the consumer, the consumer behavior, and then the standards and conformity development that we need to to make sure there is an indicator on the awareness, the level of awareness of the public on sustainable consumption and production. Well, basically the consumer, because every consumer choice affects the environment. And that is where we, w what we want to target. Uh, this is also supported by the United Nations, also included in the United Nations guidelines on consumer protection. There is one specific chapter that talks about sustainable consumption. So this has become a part of the ASEAN objectives as well. And um, right now in the, in the project that was funded by JICA, um, the goal of the ASEAN is to be able com to come up with a, the toolkit, the guidelines for the, all the ASEAN member states to be used to educate government, uh, the private sector, business, and private organizations, and the consumers in general so that we will all be aligned in what we talk about and in what we do. Uh, we have identified also certain challenges and gaps, like um, a lot of local government units would have city ordinances or local ordinances, but like you mentioned earlier, there is no specific action plan to, to pursue uh, the directive, and the different local government units would have different sets of rules so that the consumers get more confused instead of understanding and aligning with the objective. Um, there are a lot of laws that just need to be implemented. We, except of course the education, putting this in the grade school curriculum, which we passionately uh, advocate for. Um, it's, the, it's the implementation part that we are we are challenged with, and I think it's because of the lack of understanding of the ordinary consumer. So awareness and increasing the level of understanding on what sustainable consumption and production really is, and the, the effect or the impact of the consumer choices that they make. Um, as an offshoot to the, to the um, 
ASEAN Japan workshop that we had in March, we the Philippines hosted the ASEAN coming to the Philippines on the regional promotion of sustainable consumption and production. And then another offshoot of this is the Philippine Consumer Congress, which we held on October 25, uh, with the theme, Understanding the Impact of Consumer Choices. What we want to do in DPI now is to make everybody aware, starting with government, of course, and we believe that this should start with us as part of government. Of course, it will start with every individual, but as government, we have been proposing as well for automation of all uh, frontline transactions that we have, paperless transactions, but of course there's difficulty in budget because <laughs> we want to avoid usage of paper and personal um, interaction. So pa uh, going paperless is the way for DPI, but uh, it's challenging, but we're, we're trying to do it. And then the greening of the offices, the res respective offices also in different bureaus in, in every department, it should, well, Governments should, bottom line, governments should understand what it is, uh, Madam Chair. Um, I, I really want to try to set a meeting next week. Can we just uh, no, um, set a meeting in my, because I can't have a hearing because we already have the budget. So I'll just ask my team to, uh, no, to and all of you are invited naman. Okay, Sige, let's note that so just we can just, uh, no, you, you want to wrap it up one more minute? Uh, you mentioned the sachets, mm -mm. the sachets that go into the drain. Um, the difficulty here is, as a consumer, an ordinary consumer would choose what is cheaper than, than what is more expensive. So mm -hmm. there should be a wider array of products to choose from for the consumers. There should be sustainable products. There should be other choices. Mm -hmm. um, one company, Unilever, had started with, uh, with selling shampoo and conditioner in big containers. Uh -oh. And then you bring your How own container it? Yeah. or How they give... How's it going? Yeah. Um, I'm very interested in that day. Uh, I don't think it's still in the stores. Um, <laughs> what do you mean? You <laughs> but they already sh showed us the, the prototype. They brought ah, it to the pa, exhibit. Hindi pa, hindi pa na launch. It should be out anytime soon, ma'am. Okay. Can we talk about that? Because I wanted, I, I had an idea. Okay. No, but I kind of want to tell as well because in the pakindahan ng gabi, na tayo yung mag-raise, tayo yung mag-sponsor para wala nang reklamo. Ikaw yung available doon. Okay. Discussion uh, next week. Thank you, thank you for your initial report. And but meantime, can you give us the uh, no, the briefer on uh, uh, Japan, the outcomes that expected, and what is also the coverage of their funding, and what is it that you're looking for in terms of funding? To like, for example, if I say. Uh, we, let's find a way to bring the retailers here. I still want to know what's that project because I also want to know if I buy into it wholeheartedly or if I'd rather, I'd rather spend the money somewhere else. Okay. Sige. So, um, SEC, uh, you have the floor, Commissioner. Yes, thank you, uh, thank you, Madam Senator. I will. Uh, I actually have a prepared speech, but I'll try to cut it short in light of time constraints. So, very quickly, thank you for the invitation and allow me to discuss very quickly the Memorandum Sector Number Four, which uh, Neda so kindly mentioned. Right? We appreciate that. I'd, uh, before I begin, I'd like to mention, uh, I, I'll ask my staff to distribute po. Uh, the SEC recently won for Memorandum Circular Number 4, the ESAR Honors Award 2019 for the Philippines uh, from the United Nations Conference on Trade and Development. And the awarding ceremony was held just last Wednesday, uh, October 30, in Geneva, Switzerland. So it's a major honor uh, and the fact that the sustainability reporting guidelines was awarded by an international body like this. Now, uh, now, slide two, please. Now, focus on sustainability has been increasing a lot in the last couple of years. It's recognized that profit should not be the ultimate goal. Rather, there should be a balance between planet profit and people. So company growth, ultimately economic growth, should be sustainable. And so very quickly, to quote from a Brundtland report, development should be one that meets the needs of the present without compromising the ability of future generations to meet their own needs. So the growing focus on sustainability demands that companies provide greater disclosure and transparency, not just on financial, but also non-financial and sustainability issues. So this is where sustainability reporting comes in. And uh, next slide, please. The need to promote sustainability reporting to Philippine companies serve as the trigger you know, to, for the SEC to include Principle 10 and Recommendation 10.1 in the Code of Corporate Governance for publicly listed corporate companies. It says that uh, companies should ensure that material and reportable non-financial and sustainability issues are disclosed. 
uh, next slide, to define uh, sustainability reporting. It's basically an organization's practice of reporting publicly on its significant economic, environmental, and or social impacts. It's supposed to be in accordance with globally accepted standards. It enables an organization to measure and monitor its contribution towards achieving universal targets of sustainability. Uh, next slide. The, the increasing awareness of sustainability had resulted in sustainability reporting becoming a common practice for companies globally. Uh, in the KPMG survey uh, in 2017, it was found that 93% of the world's largest 250 companies and 75% of the top 100 companies in 49 countries already report on sustainability. Sadly, that's not the case here for us in the Philippine PLCs currently, because in 2017, only 22% of PLCs have sustainability reports. Uh, this low percentage may be attributed to the fact that the Philippines at the time did not have sustainability reporting guidelines. I'm happy to announce, all, however, that uh, since we've recently issued the guidelines, there has been an increase. We're looking at roughly 40% now that have complied, even though the deadline for our guidelines is next year. Pa. This year, there's roughly 40% uh, have already complied. That's roughly 110 publicly listed corporations. Next slide. ASEAN countries with sustainability reporting guidelines include well, the rest of uh, ASEAN, and then the guidelines have the following objectives, which, uh, next slide, please, which, uh, well, they're all there, Madam Senator, so I'll just skip that. Uh, that? Um, I've seen that, yes, Madam I'm, Senator. I'm, I'm curious to look at the actual, ano, the actual uh, uh, reporting uh, uh, guidelines. Yeah. It, it's uh, it actually online? not here, but I actually have a copy of the memorandum circular, Madam Senator. I can give that okay, to you in a number. Okay, just out of curiosity. Yes, ma'am. We can, we can give you a copy. Po. Yeah. My, my only concern, and I'm all for sustainability reporting, is um, it's another layer of uh, reporting that companies have to do. But at uh, but the very if, least, it's a publicly listed company, so they can afford yes, to... But, but if, if I able. may inform the Madam Senator, po, it turns out, even though that would be the initial feedback, uh, the, the initial take of most people not know that, uh, it is another layer, additional reporting requirement. It turns out the current batch of publicly listed corporations were actually very receptive. Um, in the past, when the SEC has issued new requirements, usually you'd get a lot of pushback, you'd get a lot of resistance. This one, there was surprisingly little resistance. They yeah. were very encouraged. Okay. Uh, sorry, they're very encouraging. They actually yeah. want to do Kasi this. A lot of them naman have their um, CSRs then, so parang yes. medyo it's aligned yes. with their CSRs. Yes. Anyway, a quick um, question lang, kasi this is, uh, to me, relevant to um, lesser paper consumption. Yes, ma'am. Um, I, I, when I was a practicing lawyer, there's, there's no such thing as online. <laughs> So now SEC has a online registration, right? But yes, you I'm still sorry. have to deliver a physical document. Is that correct? Uh, there are. You're referring to our company registration system. Yes. Uh, we have, in some instances, to facilitate the the registration of companies. Required na po, no, na it's in writing because, especially considering that we have some requirements in relation to notarization. Uh, Can you check the practices abroad and yes. come back to us? Because mm. you'll be. I think you're at the front line. Well, DTI and, and SEC, no, in terms of setting the standard for other government agencies. Mm. So, if other countries can do this, and I, I do recall in my days practicing, I think I had registered some uh, BBI companies for my clients before. Mm. Wala naman akong naalalang physical transmittal of documents. So, uh, Madam Senator, if I may just yeah, uh, comment on that, we are actually in the process of moving forward from the current company registrations. As I personally am actually pushing for a change in relation to that. Uh, I'm speaking to a, to a, a world, to, sorry, to the ADB to get the grant in relation to changing and having a new, uh, hopefully li literally paperless na po na system. And it will be very quick. It'll be much, we, we're hoping to have it to be much faster than the current system. And we're looking at very minimal paper po. If ever, because um, the, the, the current model we're looking at now that we want to emulate is the one in Texas. Uh, the, which is paperless, and the only time you actually get paper is when you ask for the physical na po na, na parang uh, yeah, certification that is signed. We're, we're also studying whether or not we need to have it. Because it's the notarization requirements kasi po under the law that makes it a little complicated. Because you notarized and everything. 
can you report back to me when you're ready, whether it's a month, two months, three months? Mm. I just like to get updated. Uh, on when, that. when, uh, if I, I can actually tell you now, we're looking at next year a rollout for. Okay. If everything goes well, Sige. and if nothing goes wrong the next couple of months. Okay. Uh, so what I what I'd like to come out of this from my team is uh, at least <coughs> between DTI and uh, um, SEC, what are the initiatives being taken to to address SDG 12? Yun lang yung yun yung gusto kong. Mm. Um, not necessarily the outcome of today's, I mean, I don't need that output for today's hearing, but I want that output in a few days following this hearing, okay? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Let's Sipa. leave it at that. Ah, um, do, do you want to wrap up? Um, uh, yeah, I guess it's all in the report now. <laughs> I guess uh, We have a position paper we yes, submitted. Yes, I've seen it. I've gone, okay. I've, I've gone through it. All right. And um, um, to the extent, I'll, I'll, I'll always ask everybody who's here, I'll ask my team to specifically inform you of the topic in the following week. Mm -hmm. um, unless we specifically feel that you need to be here, you're still always welcome to be here. Thank you so, very much. So, because mm -hmm. I feel it, it's very relevant to the work that you do. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have to be at your level, naman, but um, okay. if yes, you want to send somebody. Yes, ma'am. Okay? Uh, so, let me proceed to uh, Philippine Business for Environment, uh, Director Laureto. Thank you so Sorry, much, sure. Madam Senator. I, I'm conscious about the time. So, I'm going to sort of put some topics for future discussion. Um, yes, let's do that. Yeah. So, um, there are a couple of uh, different perspectives we'd like to put into the table. Uh, and I guess that's the spirit of having a multi sector uh, to add a flavor of a, a very different way of looking at things. Uh, f first, I guess, um, on the, f the focus on, on SEP, um, I'd like to challenge and offer an, a, a proposition that we look at SEP in the context of other SDGs as well. Um, so, so, so this ecosystem uh, we've put together uh, through a project with UNDP that looks at all the necessary things that needs to get done from an ecosystem standpoint. And SCP is just one of those, uh, and clearly there are gaps. And if this um, sort of discussion will s systematically address all the concerns around all of these things, then we have to have equal focus on different, like biodiversity and other things. Okay, thank you. Um, there was one other reason, lang naman that we focus then on, ano, on uh, production and consumption is because it doesn't really fall. Like if I say agriculture, we have a committee on agriculture. If I say uh, uh, gender, we have a committee on women. So, ito, medyo, fault. I, I understand, <coughs> Madam Senator, <laughs> but I think the unique view that you're taking is you're looking at these different um, sectors collectively, yes. and, and the interaction between one sector and another, another is a unique lens that you can take from the SDG committee. Yeah. So, um, and, and that's the beauty of having an SDG committee because if the, the environment sector is really focusing on banning, banning, and banning, you can look at it from another dimension, which is economic, and have it to, s to meet the demand for products and services and, and the use of packaging around that area. So it's a more comprehensive look, and I think the policy making that will come out from this. It's also futures thinking, which tends to also, uh, well, it, I feel like it's very aligned, y yeah. but it also requires a different frame of mind. Right. Uh, um, there's there's a, a lot of there's a lot of focus on consumer behavior. We'll have, an, we'll have another hearing that's just on futures thinking so that we can just kind of focus on it. Yeah, futures thinking. Um, sustainability reporting uh, of SEC were actually involved in the drafting of the policy, so we're kind of familiar. Um, the guidelines itself requires companies to look at TCFT. It's a requirement for future thinking of how business through different climate change scenarios could still be viable in the future. So that's uh, something to look into. Also involved in green jobs, uh, we've drafted the certification guidelines for Dolly and climate change. And it's going to be rolled out soon. Um, uh, actually, it's being piloted. We can offer um, perspectives also around that if you need. Uh, the other area I want to raise, uh, I think, is the uh, a different perspective on looking at how do, sh do you shift the business behavior. And there's emphasis on consumers. Consumer change is good, but it's very, very difficult to change because they decide on the basis of emotions rather than looking at data. Um, the data shows still that they, their primary consideration is cost, affordability, trendiness, and quality. Sustainability is not the driver. 
degree of importance, uh, cost and quality comes first, and then trendiness is another. As, uh, and um, and affo yeah, cost affordability. So, so yeah, and that's what market surveys really tell us. And if we put in numbers like GHG emissions there, it will never affect her because it's a very rational thing. So, a, um, that's a, 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 we can really use trendiness tr yeah, exactly. for the youth these days. Uh, but there's another lens, and I think that's what SEC, where SEC is correct, where the business behavior is highly shaped by, by the demand of the investors. The moment the investors demand um, certain practices of businesses, businesses would comply, would really adhere to those investor standards. So the drive towards uh, looking at where the knobs you can twist in policy making to get more and more investors to demand and even bigger companies to demand from their suppliers certain standards um, on sustainability that's a major driver rather than you know exerting all our effort into shaping consumer behavior so it's a value chain supply chain approach is uh, an important uh, approach um, we've been talking about waste generation may I offer a different perspective that instead of looking at generation, because generation of waste is a function of economic activity, the bigger problem is really the leakage of these waste to the environment. So the focus on understanding why leakage is happening, how they're happening, which channels, and how do you plug the waste is, a, uh, is, is the way to come up with a solution for, towards circularity. I can present a couple of ideas around that uh, if we have time. Um, we have been talking about GHG, climate change, but and in fact, 11,000 scientists has declared that it's no longer climate change, it's climate emergen emergency. But there's very little talk about the, the role of biodiversity. If we're doomed in climate change, we are equally doomed on biodiversity and ecosystems. So, and, and this is where the, the limiting view of just looking at SAP, um, that we are not looking at the other priorities are around the other ecosystems. And if we're doing this, uh, like committee meetings one by one on different topics, then probably it will take us three years to get to the so other that, important that stuff. That is why I, I requested that the key groups are always present. Right. So that whatever we focus on, we're, we're continually learning from each yeah. other. May take away kayo, may take away kayo. Yeah. So can we ensure and, that? And, and finally, I, I think uh, the bias, because this is SDG, this is not com other committee, individual committee, I think the focus. Uh, that will deliver more impact in terms of policy making and getting action and traction on the ground is really getting over from the incremental project level, initiative level ideas and going for systemic level transformation. So how do we transform the entire value chain of from plastic producer to the brand owners to the collection, the recycling, the entire system transformation needs to happen. Whether it's energy transformation, whether it's agri, whether it's mobility, these are all systemic things. And I totally support the idea, the article that you, your daughter read about why little efforts don't really count that much. We know we need to encourage little efforts, but unless the systemic change will happen, the rate by which the problem is happening is so much faster than the solution that we're creating. So extend that to eternity, we will never get to overcome or uh, achieve the solution. Yes. <laughs> so, so, so just a very, very quick 